The MCU is a very complicated verse, and when it comes to power scaling, this is perhaps where the fandom becomes most divided. And yes, you'll hear me say this a lot in our videos, but the MCU is objectively a very underrated verse power scaling wise, with the majority of characters who aren't, you know, Dormammu often getting extremely overlooked and undersold by most people. But what's easily the most controversial and debated topic when it comes to power scaling within the MCU is speed. The category which 99% of people don't actually understand properly in the context of a fictional universe. So how fast exactly are the characters of the MCU? Is it even possible for them to be light speed or is that all just utter nonsense and are they only around supersonic or massively hypersonic at most like most people seem to think they are? Well the answer to that is pretty straightforward. Light speed or faster than light speed scaling very much does exist within the MCU, believe it or not. And there are an abundance of feats and scans to prove this. And that's exactly what I'm going to be covering in today's video. So to start off with, I just want to quickly address the main issue I think most people seem to have with this sort of scaling, and that is a thing known as cinematic timing. Cinematic timing is essentially a measure of how fast something is depicted on screen, or basically by the audience, rather than how fast it actually is moving in the movie itself. And this is an extremely flawed method of scaling a character's speed for a variety of reasons. The main issue is that cinematic timing almost certainly does not equate to the actual time passing in the movie. Obviously, if you had a movie based around characters moving at massively faster than light speeds, the audience simply wouldn't be able to comprehend their immense speed and hence the fight scenes would be pointless, since you can't even see what's going on. So instead, to make things more convenient for the viewer, the time frame is massively slowed down to make things that shouldn't in any normal world be visible to the human eye, such as a laser beam or even a lightning strike, slow enough for us to comprehend. And therefore, to use cinematic timing to disagree with a certain feat would be a blatant appeal to cinematics. A basic example of this would be if we had a character who fires laser beams or beams of light. In almost all instances, laser beams and light-based attacks in fiction are presented as visible to the human eye, but by no means does this make the laser any slower since, well, it's a laser. And particularly if it's stated in the official source to be a beam of light, it's automatically a light speed. There's almost no denying that. And if you still don't agree with me, well then you're kind of forgetting the fact that these are literally fictional universes. So obviously speed in real life is not going to be the same as how it is represented in fiction, is it now? So with all that explaining out of the way, let's now get into the many faster than light speed feats of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And to start off with, we'll be covering energy blast and laser dodging. Often in fiction, a very common source for faster than light speed scaling comes from various forms of energy or laser beams which certain characters can dodge slash react to, and the MCU is no exception. In the Marvel Studios Visual Dictionary, Iron Man's Unibeam is stated to be a beam of light, and this statement is consistent with official sources from Iron Man 2. Since we know that Iron Man's hand repulsors draw energy from the Unibeam, this would also make them beams of light and therefore light speed. To support this, repulsors have always shown to have properties of light or lasers. For instance, they always travel in straight lines and reflect off of surfaces. Multiple characters in the verse have been able to react to repulsors either by dodging or blocking them, such as Thanos, Thor, Cold Obsidian, Aldrich Killian, Captain America, and Bucky. Iron Man himself was also able to react to his own repulsor in a tie-in comic using nanoparticles which outpace the beam. Of course, these feats would mean all the aforementioned characters have faster than light reflexes. However, keep in mind that simply reacting to a light speed attack would require relativistic scaling at the very least, so this can also scale to combat speed. In addition to repulsors, Ultron's lasers are also stated in an official source to be beams of light. Quicksilver in Age of Ultron was able to dodge and perceive this beam as moving slow in relation to him, and this feat is calculated to just over 45% the speed of light, although some calcs do put it higher. We also see that both Captain America and Iron Man mid-flight are able to dodge these beams, so this can serve as consistency for pre-Infinity War Cap and Tony having faster than light reflexes. In the film Thor The Dark World, Thor's hammer Mjolnir is able to fly from the sun to the earth in under 2 seconds. This feat is calculated to just over 429 times faster than light, making a casual Mjolnir MFTL. Which makes sense when you realise that light from the sun takes about 8 minutes on average to reach us here on earth, whereas Thor's hammer did it in no time. Again, just like with Tony's repulsors, we've seen many characters react to Mjolnir in the past. Thanos was able to casually dodge it at point blank range on 2 occasions, Hela could easily catch it in Ragnarok, Thor is able to backhand it without even looking, and of course Thor catches it on a daily basis. And so of course, all the said characters would need to have massively faster than light reflexes and at the very least faster than light combat speed in order to perform those feats. A couple of quite notable feats I just want to point out are when Thanos was actually able to temporarily statue Mjolnir mid-flight during Endgame, 
being able to hold up Iron Man before the hammer came anywhere near him. Alongside of Quicksilver, who was able to perceive Mjolnir as moving significantly slower than him. Now I don't know for sure if Mjolnir was travelling at its top speed in that particular instance, however even if it was, this scaling would actually remain pretty consistent for Quicksilver considering that he was able to near statue Thor. Thor has a bucket load of light speed to faster and light feet, those including reacting to energy blasts from the destroyer which were confirmed by the VFX team to be lasers and therefore light speed, reacting to repulsors which I already mentioned, and blitzing past a mini black hole in Thor the Dark World. Now for those who don't know, the gravitational strength of black holes in real life is so strong that not even light itself can escape it, and so in order to escape the pull of a black hole like Thor did, you need to be travelling at massively faster than light speeds to say the least. And yes, for those who say that these aren't real black holes, they were literally confirmed to be so in the guidebook along with other official sources and VFX quotes, so I don't know what you're trying to prove here. If I quickly cycle back to what I said about Thor reacting to laser beams from the destroyer, well, Lady Sif was also able to do the same thing, and so faster than light speed scaling remains consistent among most, if not all, us guardians. For more consistency, in Thor Ragnarok we see that Hela is able to throw a knife at Loki whilst mid-flight in the Bifrost. Now I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with this, however it is objective that Hela must have thrown the dagger at a greater speed than the Bifrost in order for it to actually hit Loki. And I've seen a lot of people use excuses like, if you threw a football at an aeroplane whilst flying that doesn't mean you're as fast as the plane. And while that is certainly true, the same logic cannot be applied for the Bifrost since it doesn't work or function like a plane. The official Marvel website confirms that the Bifrost behaves like a tractor beam, and if you don't know what a tractor beam is, literally just look it up, it's essentially a device in fiction which attracts one object to another from a distance. And so keeping in mind how a tractor beam works, if Hela did not have a greater throwing speed than the Bifrost's overall speed, then the dagger would have either just stayed still or fallen behind since it's not attracted by the Bifrost. The Bifrost is fast enough to travel across entire galaxies in seconds, a feat that is calculated to over 3 trillion times faster than light, and so as we discussed, Hela's knife had to be moving faster than that in order to travel the way it did. Thor and Valkyrie are not only able to keep up with Hela in combat, however they are also able to dodge these same blades from Hela, giving them both casual MFTL reactions and thus further solidifying faster than light scaling among us guardians. In Endgame, we also see that whilst in his weaker state, Thanos is able to block a photon blast from Captain Marvel, and Wanda is also able to do the same in Multiverse of Madness. Photons in real life are massless objects, meaning that they always travel at the speed of light, making this yet again another light speed reaction feat for Thanos. Thanos also scales to Doctor Strange, who is able to retrieve the Time Stone from a nearby star on Titan, as confirmed by screenwriter Christopher Marcus. Even if we lowball this feat to the closest star to Earth, it still comes in at over 130 million times faster than light, and for consistent faster than light scaling regarding sorcerers, the Ancient One is also able to statue lightning while in her astral form, a feat that is calculated to just over 3 times faster than light. The Ancient One is also able to use her magic to transport Strange across the multiverse in a mere couple of minutes, and we know that Strange must have been travelling through the real multiverse at least some of the time since we blatantly see him zoom past Earth and even stars at incredible speeds, and so you could potentially use this to back up massively faster than light scaling for the sorcerers in the MCU. As I said before, faster than light scaling for the sorcerers would also scale to characters like Thanos, who scales to Strange, and from there you can get pretty much every major character who scales to Thanos to faster than light as well. And just to support all this scaling, we see that throughout Spider-Man No Way Home, all three of the Spider-Men are able to consistently react to and dodge electric beams from an amped Electro. Andrew is actually able to statue this electricity in his own solo movie, which is a really impressive feat. Electricity typically moves from between 50 to 100% the speed of light, making the Spider-Men blatant light speed timers. The Spider-Men of course scale to countless characters, including the entire Sinister Five squad in No Way Home, along with the majority of the Avengers. So of course, this just further backs up the faster than light speed scaling within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's also worth considering that Electro was amped by the arc reactor, so it would be more logical if anything to take the higher end and just assume that these beams are moving at the speed of light. And I do need to quickly address something because I know people are going to bring this up in the comments. No, Electro's beams are not just lightning, there are in fact actual electricity. Can't say I'm too surprised there. And this is literally confirmed by the directors. Electro is a villain from the Spider-Man comic books who can control electricity. As Electro learns to control his power, he realizes he can dematerialize into electromagnetic particles. So yeah, as it stands, this just adds yet more consistency to faster than light scaling within the MCU. 
And just to cover the fast one like scaling for the Celestials really quickly, for one we have Ego's expansion in Guardians 2. Ego states that the expansion would take about 1000 years, and so using the low end for a single galaxy we get a speed of over 105 times faster than light, and going by the high end we get a speed of 93 million times faster than light, which is honestly more accurate since Ego's plan was to take over the entire universe rather than just a single galaxy. Being Ego's son and blood relative, Star-Lord, at least when he had his celestial powers, would also scale to this, at least to a lesser degree. And if you're not convinced with the Celestials having MFTL attack speed, well literally just go watch Eternals, they can create entire stars and galaxies out of thin air. Speaking of the Eternals, there is also plenty of additional faster and light scaling that the film brought to the verse. Makari is stated in an official source to be the fastest woman in the universe, which would put her above Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was literally able to fly across a thousand light years in under 24 hours in order to rescue Tony and Nebula. A feat that has low board at just over 365,000 times faster than light and high border over 1.4 million times faster than light. That being said, we can fairly easily deduce that Makari can run at speeds from between 300,000 and 1.5 million times the speed of light. Despite being blitzed by her a bunch of times, Icarus was able to react to Makari a couple of times and so should have MFTL reactions. Icarus was able to fly from the Earth to the Sun in 11 seconds, which is calculated to about 45 times faster than light. Icarus is also stated in an official source to fire lasers out of his eyes, making his optic beams light speed. Makari is easily able to dodge these lasers and we even see other characters like Athena react to them as well. Quickly cycling back to what I said about Captain Marvel and how she can casually travel at massively faster than light speeds, we see that in Avengers Endgame, Thanos was able to throw his sword at the Quantum Van faster than Captain Marvel mid-flight. Considering that the official movie script confirms that Captain Marvel was flying at her top speed, we can easily comply that, similarly to Hela, Thanos has a throwing speed that exceeds that of the speed of light. This would further scale to Thor, whom even while being completely out of shape is able to dodge Thanos' sword. Now I know a lot of people are going to bring this up, so I might as well address it right now. Light travelling through the Earth's atmosphere is almost the same speed as light in a vacuum, it literally only slows down by like 3,000 tenths of a second, so Captain Marvel's flight speed on Earth should be no different to her flight speed in space. We also have some calcs that put ships in the MCU at over 119,000 times faster than light, along with the fact that Valkyrie's ship could casually fly into a black hole. In Moon Knight, Khonshu is able to perform a casual MFTL feat in altering the night sky by whirling thousands of stars around simultaneously. The animated show What If, which is confirmed by Feige to be canon, also presents many faster and light speed feats. Party Thor from episode 5 was able to dodge photon blasts at point blank range. He and Captain Marvel were shown moving relative to the Bifrost, and Ultron was able to eat a galaxy at speeds of over 38 trillion times faster than light. So as you should be able to tell by now, given all the feats I mentioned in the past like 10 minutes, light speed and faster than light speed scaling very much does exist within the MCU and it is much more than just a couple outliers here and there. I mean for characters like Thor, Thanos and anyone on their level it's pretty much 100% consistent and there isn't really any reason to disagree with it. But the last thing I want to just quickly talk about is the inaccessible speed scaling of the MCU. Inaccessible speed scaling, for those who don't know, is basically when the t in your s equals d over t formula is zero, meaning speed cannot be measured and therefore you can travel at immeasurable speeds. Now I'll admit, this particular scaling is a little questionable for certain characters, however it's still worth noting. The dark dimension in which Dormammu resides is described in both the movie and official sources to exist out of time. Dormammu dwells in the dark dimension, beyond time. Given that Dormammu literally lives in this place, he would undoubtedly have to have inaccessible speed. Doctor Strange is able to move and react to Dormammu from within the Dark Dimension, which could potentially be argued by one to also be inaccessible scaling. Similarly, Eliath from the Loki TV show resides in the Void, which literally exists outside the flow of time. The Watcher and He Who Remains also exist out of all planes of space and time, so these three undeniably have inaccessible speed. Loki, as well as his various variants, are able to move inside of the Void, and both the Celestials and the Dark Elves predate the universe, as confirmed by Feige in multiple guidebooks. So, inaccessible speed scaling does undoubtedly exist within the MCU, at least for a few characters. However, if I'm being honest, I don't think the majority of the verse really goes past MFTL. I mean, there isn't really much proof of it besides, you know, Loki keeping up the Dark Elves, I guess. However, as you should have come to terms with by now, light speed and faster than light speed scaling as a whole is undisputedly real and actually pretty consistent within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. 
and I hope I've managed to do a good job explaining that to you. Please subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell and leave any suggestions for future videos down below. I just want to give a quick shout out to some of the lads over at Discord. Their channels will be linked in the description below. They post very similar stuff to us. They're awesome. Just go sub to them right now. Until then, I'll see you all next time.